Okay, welcome everyone. Today is uh, Thursday, the 3rd of February 2022, and this is uh, the Todd mm, community meeting. Let's talk, talk. Ah, I can never pronounce it, so you see the title. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk Toth Tech. And today we have a, a few topics. Uh, the, the first one is from Christophe, and it's about getting commits per country. Mm. Um, I. It feels like I have talked about that before. Uh, I can't remember. Please uh, correct me um, if I'm blubbling too much details. But there was a request from the uh, product security people. Um, hey, you guys are analyzing all that Git stuff, all that source code. Uh, can't we go ahead and figure out from where a Git commit has been um, sent? What is the country of origin of the author of the Git commit? Which is kind of tricky. Um, I think the people in Project San Diego could do something like that. Um, I think our meta information indicators could do something like that. So it was basically my my question to um, Dominic. Maybe uh, Gage can also help on that. Just ideas there for CC. Um, can't we set up a workflow? an Argo cron workflow or whatever it's called, that is really trying to figure out um, where did a commit come from. Uh, the background for the whole question is basically um, at the point in time where we know that a piece of software has been written by a certain set of uh, countries or contributed by a certain set of countries, we are obliged to remove that uh, piece of software from any of our products. Cannot comment on the regulatory policy and blah, blah, blah uh, background on that one, if it's good or not good, if it's open source-ish or not. I don't care in the end. It's an it's a thing that we as Red Hat have to do. Um, so I think it's a valid question. Can we as Toth, uh, who's analyzing all that data, uh, help somehow? Um, I think uh, as, as uh, Dominic came back and we synced up a little bit, I said, hey, um, let's bring the MI workflows uh, in a good shape so that we could do that stuff. Um, let's um, ignore the function that really determines the country of origin. So let's have a plugin in a workflow that we can fill in later. Uh, but let's let's get these uh, workflows in a good shape so that we could communicate. Um, yeah, we could help with that. Back to the product security people. Um, figuring out a community, uh, um, figuring out a country of origin might be a tricky task, right? Because I mean, everybody of us, I assume, has used something like VPNs or Tor networks, or has an email address that is like a throwaway email address, or faked some data in the GitHub bio, or did this and that. So it's really not just about reading the data out of the uh, user information on Git. It is a little bit deeper analysis, obviously. Um, we could think about some super fancy regex. We could think about analyzing the grammar used in the git commit itself. Maybe the comments give a hint, or the grammar used in comments gives a hint. Um, maybe we can identify entities in the bio, stuff like that. Second step. First step, uh, let's get the uh, workflows uh, back in shape. Let's have that plugin where we could analyze the origin. Let's show that solution um, to our product security fans. If they say, yay, that's a good thing, we're going to make that a service in the open services group and work on the identification of country. That's a whole story, I think. Cool. Um, comments? People want to work on that? Other than the volunteer, uh, Dominic? Maybe just the dimensional them ah, hack dimensionality. Yeah, right. A question: uh, Do you want to get information on the committers on or on the commits? Um, I think it's commit. Uh, that's a because, good question. Because Actually, that, that, that would be redundant, right? Because uh, when someone has 1,000 commits, 
the origin of his country is still the same, right? It depends. You might have migrated to the US. Say you're an uh, atom physics student in Iran and you do 500 commits. Then you are on a visa in the US. You are still the same committer, but the next 500 commits are perfectly okay. It might be trickery in the regulatory framework, but I guess it's about commits. But that's a very good question. I'm sure you're going to note that down somewhere in the document, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks. Um, it's a good point um, because um, I think we cannot um, bind it to a person because the intention here is really identify software and where the software came from, and therefore it cannot be a person. I still don't see clearly if this, like this end goal of determining, you know, all the geographical origin of the commits is, is actually possible. And, but in any case, wouldn't, we're talking about, you know, um, upstream open source projects that have a contributor agreement, let's say, and, and, and cannot this be tackled from that end instead in, in terms of uh, a CLA? No. Um, no? That's, a, that's a different level, right? Um, so yeah. yes, you're right. A mm -hmm. uh, contributor license agreement could exclude people from the so open source projects that might be problematic in a US America's, American uh, export regulation, but we as Red Hat need to make sure that we do not violate the export regulations. So it is uh, really information for us. Um, if we identify a piece of software that is against the export regulation, we need to exclude it from products. So it really doesn't matter wh what and who signed on a, on a CLA. It really doesn't matter what we put in our products. Okay. I mean, signing a CLA is, it's a nice indicator, but not as strong. Um, off the records, the other side might be interesting, right? If you want to bring down a whole industry, you just inject code that is not okay for export. But let's see what we can do. So I have a question okay. about this. What's the avenue of getting this data if we can't get it through? I mean, the, the GitHub API, I was looking around at it, and the most you can get about location is just through the user's inputted, which isn't enough because that can be changed or whatever. So what exactly would be pulling from the IP address or something? I don't, because the API doesn't provide that for the commits. So would it be more of just a scraping job of each commit? I think so. I think the, um, um, I have not thought about um, what information uh, can we get out of and commit. Uh, maybe uh, if you look at the GitHub archive, I think they're gonna archive all the webhooks sent out. Maybe that carries more information like IP addresses and stuff like that. Nevertheless, that is just a proxyable uh, thing, right? So IP addresses, again, not a strong indicator. So this seems to be a very deep analytical tracing problem. Mm. That is why I say it requires a little bit more effort. Therefore, let's bring our stuff in shape Let's propose that we have that little bit more effort and could help with it. It feels to me like in the end, we're gonna have something like a scorecard with a probability, right? Based on this five indicators, like IP address, language used and comments, name of the, ah, well, that's super weak thing. Anyway, based on these five indicators, we are 95% sure it is okay. Something like that. 
I mean, it's interesting. Um, the product security didn't find any public service doing this kind of analysis. The most relevant you can get from API is time zone related to this, but that's uh, still an really abstract information on geographical location. Yes. And also the time zone can be changed, right? <laughs> so. I don't know who's creating that information, right? If it's uh, the time zone um, or if the timestamp containing the time zone. I um, think it's it's uh, set up by your configuration in Bash, for example. Ah, yeah, then it's completely nonsense, actually. I I mean, that's something I can configure. As I said, it, it might be a very hard problem to, to get that. Um, first step should still be, let's get our stuff in shape. Let's uh, think about um, how to get um, that information, if we could do it. If we think it is an effort like 15 weeks or something, then we don't do it anyway. Or if uh, everybody here says, ah, oh, that's an interesting problem, but I don't want to work on it, also fair. Then we're going to pass the card. Okay. Any other comments on this topic? Okay. Up next, security issues, uh, also from Christoph. Uh, where's my screen? First link ah, is a 404. Right. Um, yes. Um, I think um, that was something that I maybe ask in chat or something. Uh, so the question is, um, is Sushita or Kebeshet uh, basically delivering the same service as GitHub's Dependa bot? So if there is a CVE on a dependency, uh, Dependa bot stops by and tries to fix that CVE by doing something, like increasing or, or updating the dependency. Is it something that we also do? Maybe this is more related to an integration test of Kebeshet, or maybe it's just a user story that we need to demo. Um, I, I just raise uh, the question here, um, can we solve these security issues as Dependabot can do it? Uh, right now, this would be the internal trigger stuff. So when we see a new CVE, um, but that's broken right now uh, due to some changes. So I'm, right now I'm working on getting the internal triggers working again by scheduling them for, directly from uh, Investigator. Right, that is something that we talked about like like uh, a week or two ago, uh, but that would also cover something like, oh, damn, I've seen a new CVE, which is the internal event or the, the internal trigger that kicks off re-evaluation of a repository. Okay. And that uh, information about why it was kicked off should stick around for the pull yes. request as well. Yes, yes. Correct. Mm, nice. That's good. Uh, keep on working on that one because I think that is um, very interesting information. Why did we update something? Okay, in terms of just a question, in terms of user experience here, like those links, I cannot see them because I probably don't have the right permissions, but uh, that's fine in, in in the sense that I guess Quebec Head would handle this as a uh, sending a PR instead or an, an issue. Well, yeah, I'm not sure so. if it's better or worse i guess there is a reason why it's not shown because you don't want to expose you know that this project is currently vulnerable to such and such and such critical severity cves right mm, yeah i think those links That's, might be oh. oh wait no 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 they're not there there was an issue though open at one point wasn't there didn't open an issue doesn't depend about open issues sometimes uh... Depend about those open 
issues to update dependencies and stuff, but I guess it's a different it's a different information what is shown here than, than in the PR, is it? Uh, yes. So this is basically just a list of um, it is per repository, as you can see, right? Yeah, it's uh, Toth Ops Infra and um, S2I Toth, but it's two repositories and the security depender bot um, settings show, uh, and you're right, it's not obvious to everybody that you need a certain uh, user level to see that. And maybe that is security um, indicated. Um, it shows basically um, you are using version one, two, three of package ABZ. We have a high severity CVE in that thing. They're going to link back to the CVE. Um, that is something that GitHub is doing regardless you are using Dependabot or not. I think for most of our repositories, we kick Dependabot out, uh, but still the security information will be shown on that Dependabot uh, page. I can add a screenshot if. Uh, if that helps. I think not everybody going to see it. But I'm actually happy with the uh, answer that uh, internal trigger, we are still working towards that. Should we be worried about opening pull requests for CVEs for the exact reason that Pap said though? I, I don't know that there's really a way around that at all because it you need to open a pull request and it needs to state that it's for a CVE even if. Um, I don't know. Yes, maybe. Yeah. Actually, I don't know what good practice is, right? It, it might be a good practice to not disclose uh, that information publicly. Ah, let's get it working. Then we're gonna decide about that. Okay, let's just keep that in mind. You maybe yes. have sensitive information. Okay. Anything else on that topic? Cool. Let's move to the next one that I added here. The favorite topics, six. And the trigger for this was uh, this PR here that was meant to remove some some SIGs that are felt not used and the criteria for finding it not, not used is that we have this uh, list of six. Um, actually, we can look at it in a rendered version, which looks nicer. Um, but we only have only, well, let's say, we have those five, six documented so far. And the list of, of labels uh, mentioning six is, is longer. So the topic is what six do actually exist um, and what six should exist. Um, those five and any additional one, any less, and that's the discussion. So here's a list of those five that we have documented in a previous, that's, I know that's not the, not, not the first time we talk about this and uh, Previous meeting, we mentioned knowledge graph. There is also stack guidance. Security was raised, which sounds quite relevant. Um, but basically, it's about discussing what six do we actually want to have and which ones we don't want to have. Uh, keeping in mind that you know, if we turn this just momentarily to a numbered list, uh, eight six means we have more six than people. Um, so that's also something to keep in mind. Uh, 
I can start the discussion, but I would love if more senior or older. Well, I'm the oldest. No, no, no. But yeah, I'm not more. Let's say better no, no, for older. team members. Yeah, no. That's a good thing uh, because older. I don't. Maybe I'm gonna hit the oldest um, thing here. Um, anyway, I have an opinion on that one. Um, but nevertheless, what what do other people think? my opinion would be like let's look through the repositories like uh, based on that let's break it down like i see that meta information should be one of those sig uh even if there are more SIGs than humans i feel it's relevant because here we are dividing topics rather than like uh, people right like one person can be in charge to many things i'm pretty sure christoph would be in charge to three or four here uh, but uh like it's just like deriving driving those things right it's not like Christoph has to work on them so that's the reason i feel like there could be more and i feel like repository could be one of the reasons we can divide yeah i agree that's a good point and and for example that this proposal was going to resolve some six that kind of match uh individual repos uh like um no. and we probably should aim at grouping them yeah. and but then there are things to to discuss on this as well i created that documentation for sig user experience and uh thinking that user experience was like the interaction about the interaction points uh with the project i added everything that was like an api or something similar so that's open to discussion should kevahead be user experience or is it uh to, to give an example or is it more um devsecops uh, material let's say I personally um, think it's more of a user experience thing because it matters a lot uh, in terms of what the user is seeing and because it, it's more of an interaction point with the recommendation engine and stuff. Um, but. Yeah, I think um, some of the things could be moved away like um, I don't know if we need to take care about um, docs, if we need to think about it anyways. We, we have a pretty okay infrastructure in place, which is generating docs. The API documentation or the, the library documentation is quite good. The website, it's not really about docs. It's not about the tooling for docs. It is something that we need to take care. Nothing that is, uh, that implies we need to have a special interest group for that one. So that is one of the things where I say, yeah, let's skip it. We don't need that. Let's remove it. Um, observability is kind of in the same area. We have a pretty good grip on observability from my point of view. Nevertheless, that is kind of application specific, right? Um, so we need to know what we need to observe so that our application is okay. Even though um, hush hard, I don't know if we have that same signet uh, special interest group on the on the operate first front. Also, if if they care about observability, so I have seen that they have a uh, sig uh, not directly under OSG, but under that uh, there's a sig called data science. Under that they have metrics, and that's where they're bringing it. And I felt like we should have this just because we we can explore this avenue and then if we like it, then we can project it and into OHJ. But I have seen that they already have it as a working group, sorry. Exactly. And um, that that might be a good argument for, uh, hey, observability is something we got under control, generally, but we need to coordinate with people. Therefore, we should, somebody have taken care about observability. Um, Security, kind of the same thing. I don't know if we need that. Uh, DevSecOps, kind of the same thing. 
feels like we got our DevSecOps, uh, well, not the Zec, but the DevOps aspects pretty much under control. Do we need a special interest group for that? Or is that something where we just contribute or participate or whatever on Operate First or the Open Services Group? I, I don't know. Um, I can give you one more pointer why I created a few of them. Uh, I wanted to put invites to the calendar, like a meeting. And I thought each meeting should be uh, linked to a SIG. So that's why I created a DevOps because we have that meeting yeah. of every year, every twice a week release. Yes. And uh, same for observability, I really wanted a meeting so that I can learn a little bit more from Francesco on that front. And I thought everyone else can also learn something. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I think at least uh, that is uh, one of the very good reasons why we should have six because it's structuring a little bit better all the topics we have at hand, right? We, we are, we are doing a lot of things by, by nature. We are looking at everything like creating an application to running an application. So it, it gives a little bit better structure. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with all that stuff. Um, and uh, then there is stuff like user experience, tech guidance, knowledge graph, which seems to be very, very close to us, right? That, that is our core business. We want to do stack guidance. Um, therefore, we should have a ZIG for it. Is it living in TOS uh, station? Is it an open services group thing? Is it an operate first thing? Uh, I don't know. I would exclude it from operate first. It might be an open services group thing. It is definitely a TOS uh, thing. But as for many other things, I'm I'm kind of, well, I don't care where it really lives. As long as we can put the TOS label on the whole activity happening in that uh, special interest group, that's that's a good thing. Again, uh, my, my opinion, please join in having different opinions. No, wait, join in. <laughs> Actually, a question uh, is, uh... I know it might get too big, but is stack guidance separate of from knowledge graph or like or should should they be together? Well, for the past few iterations, it feels like all that stuff is very much interwoven, right? If we think about a user experience aspect, like uh, what is going to come back from Tamos advice. Um, because we have a lot of information, the the Tamos advice gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and there's a lot of information um, in in the um, in the command line output mm. that is somehow interwoven with uh, what is in the knowledge graph. What do we display? What what is the guidance? What is the user experience of that single command? So mm, that is why I just put it into one bucket somehow. It is very different topics, right? Uh, knowledge graph is most often about uh, generating knowledge, storing that stuff, moving it back and forth. Um, um, stack guidance is very much uh, about uh, what, what kind of information do we have and uh, what algorithms do we use to predict the stack or to 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 generate a guidance. So I don't know. It feels like one bucket. About uh, areas, you know, uh, I don't know, just thinking aloud here, but we could have like seek or, or I don't know, uh, or I, I don't know how to call it, but then, you know, with different areas, user experience and stack guidance and knowledge graph. Like the question is, uh, uh, yeah. Um. Does that make sense or? Oh. What do others think? I mean, should we have those six? to begin with. Or... 
So I feel like uh, this sick concept when we brought up, like this is also for someone who will newly join our team, right, in future. Suppose someone is joining just for uh, the the parts of advisor uh, or stack guidance, then do we, they have to care about the user experience? If they do, then it's one bucket. If they don't, then user experience should be in a different bucket. Yep, that's uh, correct. So um, I think so that I see is... it as backend UI, and I see yeah. someone is coming for backend, then uh, the whole like, stack guidance knowledge graph is the backend in our terminology, right? And UX is UI, like UI is UI. Do we have like easy ones? Like um, I understood that uh, DevSecOps and uh, observability is something that Hashard is engaged, interested, driving, keen to do. Is that correct? Yes, but but Good. I'm only leading one, and then I have, and Francesco is leading the other. Yes, yes, uh, correct. So. Um, I was just thinking about easy, easy victims, right? So let's take these off the list. They make perfect sense to me from the point of view of um, structuring our topics. It feels like we have a quorum, not really a quorum. We have a majority. Um, Hashard likes it, Francesco likes it, Christoph likes it. As well, I said, it seems to be a random democracy. Let's let's use it. Let's do these uh, six. Um, what about docs? Somebody interested in, and I think the SIG docs is really thinking about tooling for docs and stuff. Somebody interested in it? Somebody thinks we need to improve here? Actually, docs is not, well, at least, yeah, that's another thing to, to update. It doesn't mention tooling here, but it talks about, yeah, as you said before, the, the website, but also core, yeah. uh, like documentation about the project itself and stuff. Tooling, yeah, could be added here, but. More interesting. Nobody seems to, interested, seems to be interested in docs. Let's skip it. Uh, I am interested, but ah. that's the other thing. No, I mean, <laughs> the other point is I, everything is very interesting. <laughs> that's another thing. Yes, yes, that's yes. Another... Um, that is correct. Um, another good point, yeah. Um, OK, no conclusion. Uh, what is pipelines? Uh, Hatar, did, 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 did I force you to create it? I was you also wondering what pipelines was. <laughs> you created it. I just uh, and uh, we have that team there. But I understand this is for the AICVCI and other stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think exactly. this can move to OSG because it is anyway moving there. So like we can remove it from here. But I think it's just a placeholder for now. Or we can just merge it into DevOps if that helps. Or maybe, actually, I don't know, uh, maybe re rename it as build services or something like that, or I don't know, or I just wondering. What is pipelines? Is that like all the CI, CD stuff? Yeah. Yeah. But pipelines are an implementation detail, you could say, right? Or Yeah, because exactly. we could. So we're going to fold the pipelines into the DevSecOps stuff because pipelines is the tooling that we're going to apply to do a good DevSecOps practice. OK. Uh, let's keep on rolling this. Good. Security. What about security? So I added this one. Uh, so um, I thought it would be a good idea maybe to um, have something to focus only on security issues. So, for example, I was thinking about testing, as we talked about it uh, not too long ago. Uh, so it would be security testing, for example, um, and 
everything related to, I don't know, for example, to uh, container security, uh, kind of stuff. So I don't know what you think, um, but I thought maybe it would be worth um, creating a thing for it. Uh -huh. Maybe, maybe in a similar way of pipelines, like be it an area within DevSecOps or? Maybe, right. but uh, I don't know. Maybe you, you can also find um, other topics that are a bit outside of the DevSecOps and only about security. Yeah, yeah. As, as I understood it, um, there's a fine line between DevSecOps, which is the, the subject is basically us. It is uh, our operations, development, and security practice for our application. And the security that Maya talked about is more focused on the consumer of our stack guidance. Is that what you're trying to express? Yes, it is. Nice. Uh, yes. Is that something that we see in the context of um, stack guidance as stack guidance covers uh, knowledge graph does it also cover security that's where, again we are bucketing up stuff which is against the idea of structuring our work a little bit more okay um i'm happy with that Go ahead, Maya, send a pull request, create a uh, security, think about uh, what should be included, what should be excluded. Um, it feels like it is feeding into the stack guidance. It is, it is delivering content to the knowledge graph. It is feeding into the stack guidance, but um, you can reckon it from our name. Security is, is at our heart. So it should also figure out how do we help um, developers, data scientists, by providing security-related information. What does it mean? Is it is it that we publish a bunch of security-related um, prescriptions every month? Do we set up a newsletter, something like that? So um, that that could be very interesting. Again, uh, touching stack guidance, touching knowledge graph, touching the user experience itself. Okay. That's good. You say if you are not okay with being volunteered, right? That's what <laughs> we, happens sometimes at Red Hat. I, I, I agree. It's a very interesting area and one that certainly must be taken into account, but I still have doubts about, you said it's touching multiple areas and we have this. So what, what would SIG Security own, let's say? Um, versus are you talking about like sub projects for example yeah uh, exactly uh so i don't know yet but i will think about it uh okay. and i will open maybe put this in the pr okay data dominic you added data yeah, that was added by me. Um, basically, anything that goes with data, uh, with data engineering uh, more specifically, and also anything that, that has to be with uh, data driven development, you know, anything that has to be with uh, how to extract data, where to store it, uh, what should good data look like, what forms should it satisfy. Uh, should it be SQL, no SQL, et cetera, et cetera. So anything really related to storing data and manipulating with it. How is it different from the knowledge graph? Well, the data can be different than knowledge graph, right? Knowledge graph is just some specific domain of data or some specific category of data. Had uh, created, hosted. Okay. Should um, it? It is interesting because it um, feels to me like it could structure the work uh, for the meta information indicators. Mm, 
I'm not really sure about the, the goal of that special interest group, but I see what you're interested in. I don't know if it's data or if it's meta information or if it's information or if it's knowledge, if it's uh, the acquisition and generation of that or the, the usage or the formers. So might be interesting. Same as for Maya, right? Open a pull request, post it. I think we talked about a couple um, of these meetings before that we were going to, not we were going to, but we're thinking about moving some data around so it's more easily accessible through the user API. I can see this data SIG be helpful in that regard and saying where should we store things? Should it be here, there? Should be stored differently? Mm -hmm. Virtual. Yeah, and uh, often uh, when you're doing doing some proof of concept, uh, it does not really matter what it is, but you're starting with some you know some sketch of, of data, so you don't want to. So that is the uh, in regards to knowledge graphs. So you don't want to do something complicated. So so then questions arise you know how to do something really simple but uh, you know effective so that they, mm. it can be used furthermore in development and not just thrown out okay i would say well yes yeah, so let's go for for the pr but keeping in mind as well the question about you know what what belongs to that seek and not to others and, and that as a criteria to help decide um well refine the need and and and, and all that stuff and overlaps potential overlaps let's say hmm. okay those two we said uh they are something we want to approve right the stack guidance and knowledge graph and user experience certainly something to have right i think so yes it would be a good idea but um but, uh, yeah but it <laughs> feels like we need to think about it because we still need to find a host for that one right and I'm not going to, vol vol what do we call it? It's not called volunteering. Volunteering. Oh, come on. Say it again, Kevin. Voluntold. Yeah, but there needs to be in, yeah. I don't want to volunteer, grammatically correct, I guess. Ah, yes. I don't want to volunteer the third person in a row, actually. <laughs> so somebody needs to volunteer for that. Yeah, and I'm, um, and I'm happy with um, uh, pushing that to the uh, next week, right? Um, uh, having a short look for the timing um, because I want to um, pass that. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to focus on the arm thing also. Not focus, but remind about the arm thing. All right, we we need to move that a little bit okay. further. Further. Okay, then let's. Yeah, we are actually over time, so yeah. almost over time. Okay, thanks for the thoughts. And yeah, the final topic is arm support and what can we do or should we do or what it entails. And and, I, and there are two. I I believe two two aspects one is in taught itself like the taught advices and the other one is building artifacts in uh, with an arm target um and basically those questions that christoph is actually writing how can yeah can we help arm users and how and what do we need what what are we missing and and how difficult would that be? So um, something for the Zig stack 
guidance maybe um, because it's uh, basically extending our our current um, uh, guidance to another platform. Um, we have this wonderful Office of the CTO Summit demo where that donkey car, an ARM64 based uh, autonomous vehicle um, is used. Um, so, so the question is, can can we advise for the ARM platform? That is basically the the origin of that question. And then, is it is it uh, uh, quote unquote just building that we can provide uh, to that idea, or is it also an advice? Is there something that we can spot by analyzing Python packages on ARM? Um, subsequent question is something like. Um, uh, what do we need to do to give an advice for the ARM platform? I mean, if you look at the sheer amount of CPU that we are burning for um, solving for a new Python or a new operating system, is it something that we need to do for ARM again? Do we need to solve all packages on the ARM platform? Do we need to uh, calculate or, or generate advices for the ARM platform on an ARM host? Can we do that solely based on our knowledge we have in the database? Do we need to run tests on ARM hosts? Or can we do that cross um, on, on an Intel platform? Stuff like that. Um, ultimately, we need to figure out uh, the question, given that um, Octo Summit uh, demo with an, with an open data hub with data science work happening on Intel with testing on a so-called digital twin on Intel. Can we help the users or the, the DevSecOps engineers deploying that thing to ARM? Do we have any advice for the ARM platform? Or is it just easy peasy and it's all the same anyways because we are talking about Python? This complex of questions is something we need to think about. Not saying that we're going to do that uh, today or tomorrow, um, but it feels like a perfect topic for um, to be formed six stack guidance. Um, yeah, involve yourself. Um, so I've asked uh, Frido and Pep to think about uh, that. Hashard is also involved in the uh, Octo demo. Um, Think about that. Um, it is a topic we need to give a little bit more love to. Questions, comments, ideas? I see her shattered the useful notes. Thanks. Any? Basically, we need we would need uh, an ARM cluster. That would be the main. I don't know. That is something that I will question. I don't think we need an ARM cluster. If we need an ARM uh, device to run a solver on, that that's a different question. But do we need an ARM cluster for that one? If we just need to execute one container, we don't need a cluster, right? We can use Minishift, for example. And uh, it feels like I'm happy to approve your Amazon um, receipts <laughs> where you buy a Raspberry Pi 4 to host that stuff. So these are the questions, right? Um, is, it, is it really something that we need to do on ARM? If we need to do it on ARM, what is the environment uh, that we need for that one? Because if I believe our colleagues in the Minishift uh, domain, there is a, like, yeah, let's do it. Let's deploy applications on Minishift. That's it. Uh, we can run containers over there. If it's really that easy, I don't know. Well, lots of questions. Um, let's look for answers by next time. <laughs> Any comments or? Feedback, suggestions, don't do it, or no? No, do it. 
ok. Well, that's all the topics that were on the agenda for today. Anything else? Well, then thank you everyone for your time and see you next week. Thanks thank you. and see thank you, you next week. Thanks. Bye. Bye.